Hey guys, what's up? It's Monkle Zonkey, and welcome to a new mining guide. In this guide, I hope to show you guys how to go from level 1 to level 99 mining, and I'll show you a couple of different options that you can go along the way, but for the most part, this is going to be your best path to take for mining. So before we really get into the skilling itself, I just wanted to show you guys a few helpful items that you can use. First of all is mining urns. The best mining urns you can make at level 59 crafting. The lower tier mining urns require lower crafting levels than that, but they're helpful because they fill up over time as you mine rocks that give you ores, because not all rocks do, but the majority of them do. And for those ones, once the mining urn is filled up, you just keep it in your inventory, then you get to teleport it away and it gains you extra XP. Making urns is really simple, you just buy them off of the GE and then you add whatever type of rune you need onto the urn, in this case it's earth runes, and then you use them. Also the Varrock armor, you get this from doing the Varrock task sets, you want to do the medium tasks or above because the level 1 armor for the easy tasks only works up through coal ore and you'll be mining higher level ore later on, but as long as you have medium tier Varrock armor this gives you a chance to mine double ores, which is really really nice. And also there are familiars at level 73 you can you can summon the obsidian golem and at level 83 you can summon the lava titan. There are a couple really low level familiars that don't last very long and don't give you a very good mining boost. These are the two that I would recommend. So get at least 73 summoning and then buy some obsidian golems. They give an invisible boost to your mining level which makes you mine ores more often. And you might be wondering where are juju mining potions and rock crushing scrimshaws? Those are useful too, right? I'll get into those later on in the guide in the situations where they are useful, but three, these three things are useful all across mining as well as the basics such as having a clan avatar in your world always helps as well. I do have to warn you guys that this is a fairly long video as I try to go pretty in depth in the mining skills, so if you're just looking for certain sections or certain levels to train, go ahead and look down in the description for links to skip ahead to the video for the methods that you might be interested in. So when you first start out your mining journey, the place that you want to go is south of Lumbridge, right by the bridge over to Alcarid, and there's going to be a mine with a whole bunch of copper and tin rocks. When you first start, you automatically will have a bronze pickaxe in your tool belt, which is completely fine for getting up to level 15 mining, so you don't have to worry about upgrading. But one thing that you can do is that you can buy a rune pickaxe from either the Grand Exchange or from the Dwarven Mine, and then when you assign that to your tool belt, it will act as the highest level pickaxe that you can use up until level 41 when it actually turns into a rune pickaxe. Interesting fact. But from level 1 to 15, you will be mining the copper ores or the tin ores. It doesn't matter. They both give the same XP. In this mine south of Lumbridge, it's very slow, only about 15k experience per hour. But that's okay because it's not going to take you very long to get to level 15. Also, what you want to do is you want to drag the ores onto your action bar. And then you want to press the button on the action bar that the ore is assigned to. And then it will drop the ore right out of your inventory. There's no point in banking it unless you are an Iron Man account because the ores are worth hardly anything and you won't be getting very many of them up to level 15 anyway. So just do that for a little while and you'll reach level 15. At level 15 you unlock the ability to mine iron and this is going to be a big help because iron is significantly faster than the copper. However the bad part about iron is you're going to be having to stick with this one for a long long time because this is the fastest experience in the game up until around level 68. Yes, you will unlock other ores along the way such as coal and gold and silver, but it's faster experience to just mine the iron. So there's a couple places where you can do this. First of all is in the Dwarven Mines, and the advantages of using this one is there is a deposit box right inside the Dungeoneering entrance. You need level 15 Dungeoneering to access that. Otherwise, you can go to the Piscator's Fishing Colony if you don't care about banking the iron ore and you just want to drop it, and it is slightly faster to mine here. However, if you are going to mine at this spot, I would recommend to find a high population world, so World 2 or World 77 or something like that, which has a lot of people on it, because the iron ore will take a little while to respawn, as you can see. However, even with waiting for the respawns, it is slightly faster than the Dwarven Mine. So you want to be doing this for a long time, and don't forget to bring urns, like I did. After level 68 mining, you can do the King of the Dwarves quest, and there are quite a few requirements for this quest. It does require 70 smithing, 77 strength, as well as most of the Dwarven quests complete before you can do this one. So it might take a little while to get the requirements done, but it's very, very worth it. Don't worry, if you really don't want to do this quest for whatever reason, I will provide an alternate method after this one is done. But once you do that quest, you can access Lava Flow Mine, so you want to do this on World 71. And as you can see, the experience rate is right about the same as Iron, so you might be wondering, what are the advantages to this? Well, there's two reasons why you want to go to Lava Flow Mine. For one, it's really AFK, and you don't have to drop anything, as your character will mine the Lava Flow 10 times before you have to click again. So it does take significantly less clicking than Iron does. 
and also you have a chance to spawn a golden nymph and this golden nymph can give you pieces of the golden mining set and when worn the full set will give you five percent bonus experience in mining so it'll probably take you a few levels to collect the full set but it's definitely worth it because after you have the full set all mining you do from that point forward will be 5% faster than it was before, so it's worth it in the long run if you're going for 99 or 120 mining. Also, the lava flow will change positions every 4 to 7 minutes at random, and when that happens, you need to find the lava flow that is only 50% flowing and then mine that one. And the easiest way to do this is just be on World 71 and follow the pack and someone will find it, and then everyone will congregate to the spot where the lava flow is the best experience. So if you do not want to do the King of the Dwarves quest, or if you're trying to get to 80 mining but you already have the full mining set and you want it to go a little bit faster and might also be interested in making a little bit of money, Granite might be the best option for you. So this is the setup that I would recommend for Granite. I will also have a link to a Granite mining guide in the description of this video if you want to check that out for more information. But I do have an enchanted water tiara and this will provide me drinks of water while in the desert. The quest required for this is dealing with Skabaris. If you do not have this, you will need water skins in your inventory, which will take up space for the signs of the porters and the mining urns. So the signs of the porters are great because what you can do with them is they will automatically bank the granite and then you will not have to make trips to the bank all that often except when you need to restock on signs of the porter or water skins or whatever. So this does profit a little bit of money and it is faster experience, however not AFK than the lava flow mine. So there's two ways to get to the granite mine. You can either teleport using your camulet, which is gotten after the quest Anakra's Lament, or if you're like me and you don't have a camulet, or if your camulet is out of charges, I do have one, I just forgot to recharge it, then you can teleport with a pharaoh's scepter to the desert treasure temple, and then just run directly to the west, and you'll run across the granite mine. So this is faster XP, as I said, than the lava flow mine, and it's also good for people that just hate questing, or you don't want to do King of the Dwarfs for whatever reason, as it's about 45 to 60k XP per hour. The only downside of this is you don't get that really nice golden mining suit for later on. But anyway, this is the best spot where you want to mine the granite and just mine away. There's four pieces of granite that you can continuously mine, and for the most part, they should respawn as you mine them. And then you only have to bank, really, if you need to get more water skins or if you need to sign a porter. A Tome of Frost obtained from Dungeoneering, if equipped, will also reduce the damage that you take from the Desert Heat significantly. So that's one thing that you might want to look into if you really don't want to do the dealings with Skibaris quest. But it is a really easy and quite short quest as well, so might as well get it out of the way. Unlike other pickaxes, the Crystal Pickaxe, when you reach level 71 mining, is a little bit different, so... One thing that you might want to consider is getting yourself a crystal pickaxe. This does require the Plague's End quest complete, and that does have a lot of requirements, including level 75 mining. So technically, you need level 75 mining to get the pickaxe, not level 71. However, if you want more information on about how that works, go ahead and click on the video on the screen or in the description. It'll take you to that. But you will need a dragon pickaxe to upgrade your crystal pickaxe, and you can get your dragon pickaxe back when you're done so it's not like the dragon pickaxe is gone forever but it's definitely worth investing the time into the crystal pickaxe as it will speed up your mining process by quite a bit okay now that we've finally gotten to 80 mining and you've also obtained your crystal pickaxe hopefully it's time to move on into the higher level mining method so there's only two more things that we're going to go over and this is the best one the gold deposits in the living rock caverns are going to be the best overall xp not the best mining xp per hour but the best overall XP and also the most beneficial thing that you can do for your mining experience if done correctly. So I'll go over what all this stuff is as I continue on into the method. However, the setup that you will want is the golden mining suit. I also have Varrock Armor 4 equipped, which will, of course, give you the chance for double ores. It does also double as a golden mining top if you do have the golden mining top in your bank. I also have a Staff of Fire and Gold Smithing Gauntlets, which are obtained from the Family Crest Quest for superheating. You don't have to bring these if you want to do the lazy method, and I will go over the lazy method as well. You do not need to superheat. I also have a Rock Crushing Scrimshaw equipped, and what this will do is grant you a small percent chance for a rock to be destroyed when you mine it and you also gain double mining xp it will increase your xp per hour at the living rock caverns by about 10 to 15 000 mining experience per hour so it's quite worth using since they're so cheap i also have some lava titans in my inventory a super restore to restore my summoning points and juju mining potions which will give you a chance to 
Send ores to the bank as you mine them, which is really good at Living Rock Caverns, as well as gain 10% extra mining XP while that effect is going on. You can buy these off the GE now. They are tradable now, so I'd recommend to pick some up if you're looking to do Living Rock Caverns gold ores. So first of all, what we have is the lazy method, which I jokingly call it, which is just mining at the LRC and not worrying about superheating at all. And what you want for that is the previous setup, and you want your inventory with just Lava Titan pouches. You can additionally bring Juju mining potions if you want. However, your inventory will fill up a little bit faster when the Juju mining banking effect is not going on. So it's really up to you if you want to bring them or not, whichever is easier for you, but they will grant you a little bit of extra profit from the banked ores. And then you want to go down into the Living Rock Caverns. This is the path that I always take. I go to the Falador Lodestone, and then you just drop down. And how we're going to be doing this is we're going to be using the World Hopping Method. And the one thing that you got to remember about the World Hopping Method is if you are using Juju Mining Potions, and if you're using a Scrimshaw, your Mining Potion will wear off as you hop worlds, and your Scrimshaw will turn itself off as you hop worlds. So you probably want to put your Scrimshaw on your action bar so you can easily turn it on again every single time you have to hop a world. But what you do is you go down to this very southern mining deposit, you put the gold aura in your action bar so you can drop it really easily, and then what you want to do is as soon as the deposit wears off, you go to your friends list and quick hop to another world, and you continuously do that until you find a living rock deposit that's up. This one happened to collapse just as I needed it to, which was really convenient for the video. So I just quick hop on one of my friends to a different world, and then I find a world that has an active gold deposit, and I continue mining on it. So this means that you can be quite AFK this way since it doesn't require much attention and it's really, really easy. However, of course, it's not as good experience as the superheating method. So if you do want to put a little bit more effort into your mining and be rewarded with some smithing and magic experience as well, I'll go over how to do that. Okay, so if you do want to do this method, and this is incredibly helpful, especially if you're an Iron Man account, but even just for regular accounts, what you want to do is that you want to put the superheat item spell on your action bar and then all you need for that is the fire staff and the nature rune so you will use up one nature rune per gold ore and this is going to be significantly cheaper than really any other decent way of training smithing so if you do need to get 99 or 120 smithing in the long run it will save you a lot of money and time if you decide to do it this way However, of course, it's completely up to you. It does make mining not AFK, and not everyone is down with that. I can fully understand that. But as you can see here, I do have the Juju mining potions as well, and they give a swirling effect. And while that's going on, they're banking all of the ores. They're all just being sent to my bank, which adds up for a little bit of profit too, which is really nice. And then as well as I have that rock crushing scrimshaw on my action bar, which is going to crush rocks as well, and that's going to be very helpful. So if you are using the Juju Mining Potions and you don't have to use them because they do reduce your smithing XP, you'll get around 40 to 45k smithing and magic per hour on top of your mining. If you're not using the Juju Mining Potions, you'll gain about an additional 85 to 90k smithing XP per hour on top of your mining. And one thing that you might see is it goes up to 130k experience per hour. That does sound high, but if you're using the Juju Mining Potions, if you're using the Crystal Pickaxe, you're in the 90s level of mining as well as the golden mining suit you can easily obtain experience rates this high along with the rock crushing scrimshaw as well all of this stuff adds up to make mining really really fast this way which is just great and it's cool being able to use all of these boosts so that's about it for the gold deposits i know not very many people are going to choose to do this way over sarin stones because sarin stones are more afk slightly faster mining experience per hour and a lot less effort than superheating but if you do want to get to 99 mining the most efficient way possible this is the way that you want to do it and finally we get to the epitome of mining training and this is sarin stones so you do need level 89 mining in order to mine these stones, and you do need the plagues and quests complete as well. So the requirements to do these are pretty hefty, but if you can get them done, you will be rewarded with about 100 to 150k experience per hour in mining. And yes, it does go up to 150k mining XP per hour in the high 90s using a crystal pickaxe with a lava titan as well as the gold mining suit. And no, that is not with Voice of Saren active, that's how it is normally. It's even more with Voice of Saren. In addition to gaining the mining XP, you will gain some corrupted ore as well. I found with a crystal pickaxe in the high 90s of mining again, it's around 35k XP per hour in smithing worth of corrupted ores. You don't gain experience right away, but as you use them on a furnace, then you will turn these into experience, and it's free smithing XP, and it's quite fast to use them up, and it's also very AFK. So that's a very nice benefit of these Sarin Stones, is the extra smithing, potential smithing XP that you get along with the corrupted ore. But anyway, this is 
probably the way that most people will choose to get 99 mining and it is a very enjoyable one. And last but not least, you can also do Wilderness Warbands for mining experience. Unfortunately, I can't help you out with this as I don't do Warbands myself. I don't know any friends chats that you could go with. However, if you do know a good friends chat, or if you have a clan that does Warbands, or even if you want to try to solo them yourself, mining is one of the five skills that you can do with Warbands. So if you choose to loot the mining tents, it's a pretty good amount of mining experience per day up to 360k at close to 99 mining and it's a really good way to train mining if you're not interested in training the other four warband skills that's about all for this mining guide thank you for watching hopefully it helped you out and you learned something feel free to leave a like if you would like to and also don't forget to leave down in the comments which one to 99 guide you would like to see updated next i will not be doing smithing or construction until those skills are updated however also, if you have a need for any more 1-99 to guides, I will have a link to that on screen as well as in the description of this video. And I will see you guys next time. Farewell.